Greetings, my friends and my enemies. It is I, the Great One himself, founder of the Cynical Libertarian Society, 10 motherfucking years of podcasting. 10 fucking years, bitches. CYNLIBSOC.com on the interwebs. CYNLIBSOC on the Twitterverse. I got some CLSology for your bitch asses this morning. <clears throat> if only it were possible for me to not create unneeded noise. Let's, let's do some more of that. All right, I'm getting settled. All right, now. Stop fucking hitting the microphone. If only it were possible for me to not hit the microphone. And if it all also possible for me to record the thoughts in my brain. Ugh, be glorious. I went for a walk this morning. It was good. Because normally the routine around here is get up, make the coffee, turn on the computer, start doing work, or get up, go running or go biking or something like that. This morning, I just went for a nice, calm, just walk around town, did some thinking. It was really good. I had a lot of stuff go through my mind, and I want to see how much of that I can download into the podcast here. Just yesterday, today is you know, the 23rd June, July, June, June 23rd, 2015. Yesterday was a day that Randy and I recorded the episode of Stating the Obvious, whatever it was, I think it was 236, where I talked about Matt Forney's article about the virgin toes. And I had a lot of fun doing that episode. I ranted and raved, and I know I was circular, and I know there are a lot of times where my lines of reasoning were dropping in and out. It was not like a coherent, solid piece of philosophical work. I'm perfectly aware of that, but I had fun, and that's the point. But I want to expand on a little bit of what happened there in a more calm, not screaming fuck and stuff, rational philosophical manner. Forney brought up the point, which I agree with, that there has to be a balance between men and women. I have said before, and I've been attacked on the social media for saying this by the feminist statist, the United States, our nation state, our country, our society right now today, has become a society of the women for the women by the women. Most of the problems we have in this country, most of the reasons we are declining can be traced to women. I, I know this hurts your feelings, blah, blah, blah. Yes, the state, yes, democracy, all of those things are huge problems. But when you follow statism and democracy back to the source, here's the problem. It's called women. And it's not just women. Women themselves, first of all, as I've said before, women are my favorite thing in the world. I love women. I love girls. It's like, I love water. But if you have too much water... It'll kill you. I love girls. If you have too much girls, it'll kill you. That's what's happening to our society. The balance between men and women has been completely disrupted. In our society today, as I have said before, everything in our society is now geared towards making sure upper middle class white women never experience discomfort. Right? If a white woman hears an opinion she doesn't like, that opinion has to be silenced. If a white woman can't afford birth control pills because she's spending too much money getting drunk at the bars, she needs free birth control. Right? If a white woman doesn't like being called a slut 
then she's going to call herself pansexual and you goddamn better call her pansexual as well and recognize that that's a gender choice that she's made and if you don't you're going to get in trouble right if upper middle class white woman is uncomfortable negotiating for a salary raise well then the corporation better make it illegal to negotiate for salary raises and pay everybody the same thing, right? Every fucking thing in our, right? If upper middle class white woman is uncomfortable with men playing computer games, well then we'd better fucking get more female characters in those computer games and make them gender neutral. Anything that makes a white woman uncomfortable in our society has to be squashed. In a sane and rational society of humans, as there was in the past in this country, back in the evil days of patriarchy, there was a balance between the masculine and the feminine. Because women do, if they're left to their own devices, women do stupid shit, right? Women are consumers. Women love to consume. If left to their own devices, women would consume everything on the planet Earth and leave nothing but a fucking barren husk. This is why so many women are so obsessed with being environmentalist and talking about conservation and sustainability and all this other shit because women, as I have said before, women are the most environmentally destructive animal on the planet Earth. Human females have done more to destroy the planet Earth than any other animal that's ever been. Again, with the book, The Greenwashing, how he talks about the supply chain. This is what I've talked about. This is how I explain this all the time with women. It's the supply chain. Think of all the shoes that women buy. Think of all the makeup, all the hair products, all the hair salon visits, all the clothing. Now think about all the fossil fuels burned to create and transport all of that stuff. Think about all the slave labor in China. Every time a woman has to upgrade her cell phone twice a year. Right? Just on and on. As you trace the supply chain back, you will see that women, especially the ones who can't shut the fuck up about being tree-hugging environmentalist global warming adherents, do the most destruction to the planet Earth. Because women, by nature want to consume resources. Men, on the other hand, create things. Again, Aristotle, the politics, he figured this out when he talked about the place of the family and the polis. We talked about is the duty of the man to bring resources into the household. It is the duty of the woman or the place of the woman or the natural order of the woman, whatever the words you want to use. It's the duty of the woman to manage the household and spend the resources, use the resources to manage the household. Men create. Again, look at what women do when women have career choices. They become college professors. They become welfare workers. They become gender feminist studies people-ish. They become psychotherapists. These, these are, they go into government jobs where they push pieces of paper around. These are make-work jobs that create nothing. What do men do? Men are plumbers, electricians. They build bridges. They do things that are creative. When there's a balance between men and... Okay, now also, both men and women, very often in their lives, do stupid shit. Because we're humans, we all do stupid shit. Every human alive does stupid shit. No matter how smart you are, you do stupid shit. Okay? Roosh, very smart guy, thinks the government should make people's decisions for them. He's a smart guy doing something stupid. Matt Forney, very smart guy, thinks that individuals don't matter and that relationships are the basis of society. Really smart guy, thinks something that's pretty stupid. I myself have, again, 10 years of podcasting. 10 fucking years. Yeah, all you people, I started a podcast last month, fuck you. 10 years of podcasting. 
Go back, listen to the early days of this podcast. You will hear me saying stupid shit, mind-blowingly stupid shit comes out of my mouth. Just stupid shit. Some of the shit, just stupid. Stupider than fuck. I'm a really smart guy. I've said a lot of stupid shit in the past. I'm probably saying some stupid shit in the future, too. Everybody does stupid shit. When you have men and women in harmony, they balance each other out. It's a checks and balance system. Women want to do stupid shit like go buy their fucking 97th pair of shoes. That's where the man says, no, you're not buying any more fucking shoes. Calm your bitch ass down. Right. The man gets in an argument at a Little League game and wants to beat up the father of another kid. That's where the woman says, hey, it's a fucking baseball game. You need to calm the fuck down. We've lost that. We've lost that thanks to <clears throat> statism and democracy because those things are powered by women. Women, by nature, are going to be more communist, more socialist, more collectivist, more statist. Again, because women want resources that they can then use, that they can spend, that they can consume. Women, as other people have always said, as other people have said, women almost universally are always going to vote for more socialism. Anytime a woman can get the government to give her more free stuff, she's going to do it. No woman is going to turn that down. And as men have become more feminized, as they've lost their masculinity, their self-reliance, their pride, their dignity, as they've become pajama boy, they also want more free stuff. David Saruni, guy I talk about a lot on this cast, again, he's on the YouTube, go find his, his channel, I really recommend watching his videos. Another really fucking intelligent guy who does says some stupid shit. He's, he's a monarchist, he's, he's, cl he's so close to being an anarcho-capitalist, but he can't, you know, let go of that last little bit. He believes that there should be a monarchy because you need a king in order to show you what virtue is because you can't figure that out on your own because you're too stupid. But really smart guy. A lot of great videos. Very intellectual. Uses a lot of big words. Big words that I can't pronounce. If I remember correctly, what I'm about to say, I first heard in an Aruni video. Democracy, and I, I think, I'm pretty sure it was Aruni, and this is how he explained it. He said, democracy, if you're going to have it, the only people who should be able to vote are people who own property, men who own property, because you have, the vote isn't for individual people, the vote is for households. So you have households, they're headed up by men, they own property, that should be the only people voting. Now, I, again, to a large degree I agree with him, I don't think there should be any democracy, because I'm an anarcho-capitalist, and I'll explain why, but his reasoning is really solid, and here's how his reasoning goes. If the only people who vote are men who own property, these men are not going to vote for welfare programs, and they're not going to vote for f wars, because war and welfare programs have to be funded. Neither of those things make money. So to fund those things, you have to take money away from people who have money. Now, who has money? Well, people that own property. The men that own property are the only ones with money. They're also the only ones voting. So if they vote for welfare or they vote for wars, the money to fund those things is going to come from them. They know they're going to have to pay for that. And if it's going to have to be there, unless it's a really desperate thing, I mean, sure, a war, okay, if the enemy is knocking on your border, you know, if the enemy is massing on the border, that's different. But this shit like the wars we have now in countries that 
Nobody even knows where the fuck they are on the map and all this other shit. And this expansive woof from behind. So property owning men would have to pay for that shit. Therefore, property owning men aren't going to vote for that shit and the shit's not going to exist. I think it makes a lot of sense. I think it's solid. I think it's true. The flaw that I see with that, <clears throat> and we can look at George Washington and the Whiskey Rebellion as an example of this. The flaw with that is that here's what property owning men will vote for. They will vote for regulations and restrictions and laws that will make sure they don't lose their wealth. So for example, all the property owning men who own whiskey distilleries, for example, like George Washington, will put in place laws that prevent other people from starting whiskey distilleries because they're not going to want competition. So even as wonderful as a democracy in which only property owning men can vote sounds, there's still a great problem. Yeah, I think there would be no welfare, there would be no wars, but there would be a hell of a lot of business and wealth regulations to make sure the property owning men were in no danger of losing their property via competition. And of course, economic competition is what you need for anarcho-capitalism to work and not democracy because democracy always leads to the standards of the lowest common denominator. That's a different tread that I don't want to go down. Track, I don't want to trail, I don't want to go down. Okay. So with democracy, now you throw in the women and the poor and yeah, you're going to have a bunch of people voting. Everybody, every fucking human being, again, this and this is not a, an insult, this is a fucking fact. Every goddamn human being, when given an opportunity to vote for something, vote on something, vote about something, is going to vote in their benefit. And all you people out there who talk about altruism, you're just, you're stupider than fuck. It doesn't exist. Again, if altruism existed, there would be no homeless people, right? There are people in the United States, they're homeless. There's all these cocksuckers who claim they care about homeless people, okay? If you care about homeless people, you go, you find a homeless person, you bring the homeless person into your home, you let them stay there, you help them find a job, you let them live there until they have enough money to get a home. They're not homeless anymore. As I've said this a gazillion fucking times over the last 10 years, you can solve homelessness in less than two weeks, 10 days. It just, it's just a matter of finding all the homeless people and somebody taking them home. So all of you who claim you care, you don't. You're saying you care because you're selfish, because you want to feel like someone who cares. You want the reputation of someone who cares. You don't give a fuck about the environment. You don't give a fuck about the children. You don't give a fuck about homeless people. If you did, you would do something about it. As I have said thousands of fucking times, you always, 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 there are zero fucking exceptions to this. I mean, there's always an exception. Oh, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. There are zero exceptions to this. You always judge people by what they do, never by what they say. What people say does not fucking matter. It does not fucking matter, ever. Only what they do. This is why as an anarcho-capitalist, Anytime I hear, the first time I hear about safe zones or speech, and as we see the anarcho-capitalist, yeah, I almost said movement, I really fucking hate that word, the anarcho-capitalist sphere, there's like the manosphere, can we call it the ANCAP sphere? I don't know. The ANCAP sphere is currently being invaded by social justice warriors. You can see them creeping in, like on Ben Stone's show. Ben Stone, like this guy I used to worship and talk about how great his was and blah, blah. You know, and he's got this fucking social justice warrior on his podcast and the social justice warrior is going, yeah, and everything that our society now is because white men took things from minorities in the past. And Ben Stone's like, oh yeah, yeah, that's right. I'm like, what the fuck just happened here? The fucking social justice warriors are creeping into the anarcho-capitalist sphere. How the fuck did I get there? 
That's not what I'm supposed to be talking about. It's true, but it's not what I'm talking about. Oh, judging people by what they do, not by what they say. Okay. I still don't know how I got there either. I'm getting off track. I love when that happens. All right, we're, I have notes, sort of. Yes. We're coming back to the balance between men and women. Democracy. Democracy has contributed to the destruction of the balance between men and women. Once you get in all the female votes wanting stuff for free, you get in all the pajama boy votes, people wanting shit for free, you get in all the liberal democrat wanting shit for free, and Republicans want shit for free as well. All Everybody wants shit for free. If you're voting, it's because you want shit for free. You get all of these people who want all this stuff for free versus, the that's the feminine element, versus the masculine element of creating from nothing, of pride in standing on your own, you know, pulling yourself up by your bootstraps, so to speak. Normally, those two things should be balancing each other out. The women wanting resources for free that they can just spend without control is balanced by and with men creating things, men being the elements of creation. And, the, and you know, I haven't ever made a list. Of, I'm not trying to say that all masculine traits are good and that feminine traits are bad okay S consuming resources is not bad if we didn't consume resources we'd all be dead okay and and because i know this is what's going through some of your minds and th this is exactly the sort of thinking that is the fucking problem is you people don't understand balance again conflict i've talked in the a lot in the past not lately conflict dualism our society is very much into conflict dualism Right? There's Republicans and Democrats. One of them is good, one of them is bad. One must win. They're in conflict. There are no other options. Right? There's God and there's Satan. One is good, one is bad. They're in conflict. One of them can win. There are no other options. Right? There's the Broncos and the Steelers. One is good, one is bad. One of them can win. They're in conflict. There are no other options. You're either a Kantian or you're a utilitarian. One is good, one is bad. They're in conflict with each other. One of them must win. There are no other options. Our society is completely... Uh, there are men. There are women. One is good, one is bad. They're in conflict. One of them can win. There are no other options. Actually, there are. There's all these made-up genders, right? Either you believe in made-up genders or you don't believe in made-up genders. One is good. One is bad. Only one of them can win. They're in conflict with each other. There are no other options. If you believe in safe spaces, you're compassionate. If you don't believe in safe spaces, you're racist, sexist, and homophobic. There are only two options. They're in conflict with each other. Only one of them can win. There are no other options. Right? Everything in our society is very conflict dualist. As opposed to the Taoist type or Buddhist type thinking, maybe a little more so the Taoist, with the yin yang, right? Forces in opposition yet in balance. And degrees, again, also the Aristotle, the Aristotelian means, right? Too much bravery? Bad. You're going to die, really. I'm brave. I'm going to go out there and try to kick the ass of that saber tooth cat with this toothpick. Well, no, you're going to die. You know, versus being a total coward. I'm scared to go outside of the cave. I'm going to sit here in the corner and just starve to death because I'm afraid to go outside and find something to eat. You have to have a balance in between. So when I talk about masculine elements and feminine elements, none of these are bad or good in and of themselves. They're all good 
when they're balanced by the other thing. Women want to consume. Consuming is good until it runs out of control, right? Men want to create. Creating is good unless it runs out of control, okay? When you lose the balance, that's when things go to shit. Then we're back where I started. There's no balance. Democracy has allowed the desire for consumption to get completely out of control. Our society is being dominated by the f feminine and I, I try to again if you're, if you're new I try to use the words precisely. Feminine and feminist are different. Feminist is when I, when I say feminist that's usually a derogatory thing. And this is the thing, feminism, it, wait, no, words, it hurts, my brain hurts. Feminine is the norm. Feminine is good. Feminine is what is balanced by masculine. When feminine goes to the uncontrolled extremes that we see today, that's when it becomes feminist. And that's where what's happened. Because of democracy, because of all the free handouts, because of giving all of this political power to the least intelligent people, the least competent, the least capable people in our society, we have moved from a society where masculine and feminine balance each other out to a society where feminism, the feminist, dominates everything. As we become, as a society, more feminist, it's a feedback loop. As we become more feminist, women not only become less balanced by men, men become less balanced by women. And that's where we get the perma-virgins, to use Matt Forney's phrase, term. And the virgin toes, to use Aaron Clary's terminology. And the perma-virgins, simply by nature of being perma-virgins, are going to err towards the feminist as well in the sense of their traits, in the sense of perma-virgins are not going to be creators like masculine men. They are going to be consumers like feminine women. So we have a society where not only are almost all the women these self-absorbed, selfie-obsessed, narcissistic, you know, cock-riding cunts who only care about themselves and how many resources they can leech from other people through the state, but most of the men, and I mean men in gender, not men as an attitude and not masculinity, most of the males in the species are feminist in the same way. Being unable to get dates, being unable to interact with women, being, they, you know, being spending all their time playing computer games and going on the internet and whining about how girls are yucky. They're not engaged in creation and thus creating their own resources so they need resources given to them and it's the cycle and it's just it's going to keep getting worse it's only going to get worse until the balance is restored. Things are going to keep getting worse. They really are. 
I did a podcast about this a while back. It's titled something along the lines of The Economic Collapse Will Bring Back Feminine Women. And this is true. I think my opinion is the only way we're going to, as a, that we, a society, a nation, you know, this legal fiction known as the United States, just people in this geographical region, there's going to have to be an economic collapse in order to reset all of this. We're going to have to get to a point where women and the pajama boys can no longer get free things from their husband Obama and are no longer having their asses kissed by their boyfriends, the corporations, and are no longer being protected from being offended and are no longer provided with all of these platforms to attention whore. Until all of those things collapse and fall down and break the feedback loop, we don't have a chance in hell of things getting any better. That's why <clears throat> you should purchase Aaron Clary's book, Enjoy the Decline. It's available on Amazon.com, paperback or Kindle. You should read it. You should prepare for the decline. You should enjoy the decline as it's happening. And you should join me in doing anything, even the smallest bits possible, any small thing we can all do to hasten the economic decline is going to get us one day closer to restoring the balance between men and women and forever silencing both the femistatist and the permavirgins.